is a representative body. How do you represent 300 million people and all of this diversity? There's many ways to illustrate that, of course. And that's what the Congress is all about. It's a representative democracy. But that's not all. It is also a very accessible branch of government. Suppose you got a complaint. I know you all never have complaints against government, but suppose, just <laughs> hypothetically, you can't call up the President of the United States and say, Mr. Bush, I'd like to talk to you about a problem I got down the street here. You can't call up the Vice President. You can't, if it's a foreign policy matter, you can't call up the Secretary of State. You can't call up the Deputy Secretary of State. That's not because those people don't want to talk to you. They're busy. Who do you call up? Member of Congress. Your state representative. They are accessible. That's a hugely important asset of the United States Congress or of a state legislature to be accessible. It's a deliberative body. You know what it's all about? It's all about trying to build a consensus behind a solution. That's what you're trying to do in the Congress or in the state legislature. And that's tough to do with all of the diversity I mentioned a moment ago and the bigness. You and I can sit down over here in the corner with a cup of coffee and probably solve most every problem in the world pretty quickly. <laughs> Doesn't amount to a diddly damn. You don't have a solution until you got 218 votes in the House, 60 votes in the Senate. Senate is not a majoritarian body. You've got to have 60 votes. And you've got to have the President's signature. And if you don't have that, you're not in business. That's the way the country works. You deliberate, you debate, you do have conflict. It's ongoing, it's never ending. Now, I'm worried about this quality of deliberation in the United States Congress. Members come in Tuesday night. They vote on a couple of naming a post office. They named a post office after me, for God's sake. <laughs> then they go to work Wednesday, want to get out Thursday. How do you deliberate? How do you build consensus? If you're working two or three days a week. I don't know how you build consensus unless you talk to one another. If you know how to do it, let me know. And talk. And talk. And talk. I remember driving across the 14th Street Bridge at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning after some of our deliberations in those meetings and saying to myself, we're never going to make it. We can't agree. But we go back the next day and start over again. And we talk through the problems. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes a willingness to reach an agreement, not always present. That's the way you build consensus. That's what the Congress is all about. That's what the legislature is all about. You know the great skill that's needed in a politician today? Maybe you get that question. I get it all the time. What kind of skill do you need to be a good politician? Well, you can say a lot of different things. But do you know what the skill I look for is? The ability to build consensus. That's it. Anybody can walk into a room where you've got differences of opinion and blow it apart. I know because I've done it a few times. <laughs> you know what's really hard? What's really hard is to walk into that room and bring people together. And I'm not just talking about politicians. Could be the church. Could be the hospital. Could be the school. The political skill of bringing people together is in my mind the skill we're most deficient on today and we need the most. It's all part of deliberation. Congress is an independent branch of government, co-equal branch. 
That's what the Constitution's all about, isn't it? Separation of powers. The Congress shall have the power to declare war. It's a total nullity. When's the last time we declared war? I can't answer my own question. <laughs> it goes back to World War II. We have intervened militarily about every year and a half since World War II ended, somewhere, sometimes big, sometimes small. Never once a declaration of war. Who makes the decision to intervene militarily? I'll tell you who it is. It's the President of the United States. It's not the Congress. I don't think that's what the Founding Fathers intended. But 2008 is not 1789, and that's the way it is. If you tell me about the Congress, you say, well, Congress got the power of the purse, but be careful of that. If you go back over the last 10 or 20 years, you'll see that the Congress of the United States simply rubber stamps 95% of the federal budget. The real arguments about the federal budget don't take place on Capitol Hill. They take place in the offices of the Office of Management and Budget. That's where the real arguments take place. The President of the United States is the chief budget maker, not the Congress. Now, don't misunderstand me. The Congress shift around $100 million, $500 million here and there. That's not unimportant. Can be very can be very important. But in terms of the total budget, it's peanuts. So I worry. I really worry about this. I don't know if anybody else worries about it. I worry about it. How long, how far down this road can you go ceding power to the executive branch and still have a representative democracy? I don't know. Independent. When you're sworn into office, I don't know what you do in the state, I held up my hand and said, I swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean that I swear to uphold and defend the President of the United States. That doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean that I swear and uphold the, the views of my constituents. It doesn't mean that either. <coughs> it's the Constitution you swear to. What does that mean? Well, it means a lot of different things to different people, but surely it means separate and equal branches of government. That's what the Constitution's all about. Anybody in the country can run for Congress by running against the Congress. You ever heard that done? I used to do it myself. <laughs> Then I got to thinking, I said, I can't do that anymore. I can't really do that anymore. Majority, minority, doesn't make any difference. I'm a member of the institution. And the bottom line is, I got to try to make the country work. That's the bottom line. And I have, as a member of this institution, an obligation to it. And I just can't spend all my time attacking it. Criticism, of course. I, I'll make a lot of criticism of the Congress. I will in a few minutes. <laughs> but underlying that all, you have to have a respect for the institution. If you're a part of it, you've got to make it work. It seems to me. Well, the Congress is a political body. You don't want to forget that. Every person you visit is a politician up there on the hill. And what a politician has to do is deal with a multitude of pressures. They really do. Let's not joke about it. It's tough. What's the purpose of the United States Congress? Well, you can answer that a lot of ways. You can talk about passing a budget, that sort of thing. But you know the historic purpose of the United States Congress? Its, it's great mission 